In this video, we're going to take a quick look at recovering deleted files from an OS X system. Before we get started, let me introduce myself. My name is Fred Lackey. I'm an IT professional and specialize in building software for multiple systems, including Windows, Mac, iPhone, and Android. One of my current passions is a site called RealisticProgramming.com. Realistic Programming is a free, online, instructor-led video course where newcomers can learn programming and where software developers can take their skills to the next level by learning how to reduce development costs, increase their own productivity, and ship quality code. This video will not be very technical. My hope is that anyone will be able to watch and get themselves out of a jam. Since OS X does not have a command to undelete your files once your trash has been emptied, we'll use a product called Remo Recover for Mac in this demonstration. The product itself is from Remo Software and goes for $179. There is a less costly version, however that version is limited and can only recover a handful of file types. So if you want to restore any type of file, spreadsheets, photos, videos, whatever, you will need the professional version. So let's take a look at the process and recover some files. First, we need to prepare our source drive for the demonstration. We have a new 300 gig Velociraptor installed, so let's get to work. First, let's use Disk Utility to create a few partitions on the drive. We've created a 10 gig partition so that scanning the drive will be easier during the demonstration. Next, just to be sure the drive is entirely empty, we're going to erase it. Now that our drive's been deleted, let's drop some files on it so we can delete them. Here we have 2.5 gigs of archive and video files from TechPub. Let's drop those onto the drive. The files are copied. Let's take a look at what we have. As you can see, we have two directories of zip files and one directory of mp4s. Now let's delete those files. The files have been moved to the trash. We need to delete them to get them off the drive. At this point we've added a bunch of files to our drive and then deleted them. Now it's time to use Remo Recover to undelete them. When we first launch Remo, we're presented with two options, Recover Photo and Recover Advanced. Let's choose Advanced. The Advanced window gives us two options, the ability to choose from the actual device name or the ability to choose from the partition. Let's choose Test Source, the partition where we deleted the files from. Once you've selected the partition, you need to tell Remo what types of files to delete. We're going to select all of them. We also want to be sure that Remo doesn't skip the file because of the size. So let's increase the maximum file size to recover to 10 gigabytes. One of the final options in the wizard is to choose the starting and stopping position of the recovery. We want to choose the entire drive, so let's just simply click Next. When the scanning process is complete, we're presented with a list of folders and files that were located. Notice that we have two, TechBub at 2.5 gigs, and Audio Video at 21.94 gigs. This second entry is a bit surprising. If you recall, our partition only is 10 gigs in size, so there's no way that 21.94 gigs of data could have been found. This first directory looks a bit normal. We copied about 2.5 gigs of data onto the drive. Let's examine the two. When we expand the audio and video folder, we see that two different types of files were found, .mov files and .mpg files. 
Each of the files are listed separately, and each of them are pretty sizable in space. However, none of these look like our files. Let's take a look at the TechPub directory. As we expected, the TechPub directory appears to be intact. All the videos and archive files appear to be in good working order. Now let's recover some files. We start by selecting the directory that we want to restore and simply clicking the Save button. The prompt that pops up simply reminds you not to save data back to the drive you're recovering data from. If you do this, there's a good chance you'll overwrite the data and not be able to get it back ever. Let's click Yes to continue. Next, we need to choose a location to save our data to. For this demonstration, we'll create a directory on the desktop. Once our folder has been created, we select it and click Save. Once the process is complete, Remo gives us a confirmation. Let's close the utility. Note that Remo prompts us to save our scan data. This is pretty handy. You'll want to save your scan data so that you won't have to repeat the scan next time. If you didn't have enough space on your target drive to recover all your files, you'll want to go back in and recover them later on. Although the process was a bit clunky with several unexpected files appearing, we did recover our files. Our file names and folder structures were preserved, and this makes life a bit easier. And since Remo Recover allowed us to save our scan data at the end of the process, we're able to do partial restores whenever we need to without needing to rescan the hard drive. I should point out, however, that you need to decide what to do with your hard drive. If you have the capacity on your target drive, your best bet would be to do a full restore of all of your data, to basically get it while you still can. However, if you decide to do a partial restore, either take the source drive out of your machine or take whatever steps you need to ensure nothing writes data to the drive until you have restored everything. Saving any new files to the source drive could destroy any chance you have at ever retrieving your lost data. I do appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and sincerely hope that this made the process of undeleting your files a bit easier. Please take a moment to drop me a line with feedback on this video, be it good or not so good. There's always room for improvement. Maybe you have an idea for another video that can help yourself or someone you know. I'd love to help if I can. And if you're interested in learning how to program, or if you're already writing code and want to get better, please stop by realisticprogramming.com and take a look. Thanks a bunch, and have a great day.